Why do you contend, if I understand your position correctly, that the scrolls teach us more about Judaism than about early Christianity? Well, I think what has to be emphasized here is to start with, what are we studying when we study the Dead Sea Scrolls? Now, one thing we could do is we could say we really want to know about some strange people who couldn't take the environment in Jerusalem from a religious point of view and went to the desert and set up their own sect. The alternative is I want to study the scrolls to see what the scrolls tell me about Judaism at the time. So I'm going to look at the biblical scrolls. What are they telling me about the state of Tanakh? I'm going to look at the works of non-sectarians, as we call them, that came into the possession of the group, and I'm going to look at the group's own works. Now, the difference between these two activities is that in one case, I'm studying a corpus of Jewish texts that come from Second Temple times, and I'm studying about Second Temple Judaism. The other way, I'm, I'm studying some strange people. Now, what happened in the field historically is that the study of the strange people was what really was the mainstream. And then those strange people were under, to, understood to have some connection to early Christianity based on a theory that went back hundreds of years that the Essenes might be proto-Christians. And then the whole thing was being studied as if what you have here is a corpus of pre-Christian documentation of the beginnings of Christianity. Now, this, in my view, is erroneous. Because if you read the entire corpus as we have it, you have an enormous amount of information, not simply about the sectarians themselves, but about Judaism as a whole, as found in many of the other books, and also in the sectarian arguments with Judaism as a whole, you learn about the people they're arguing with. So from my point of view, the basic data that I'm reading, that I'm looking at, is data about Judaism in the Second Temple period as a large-scale enterprise. Now, that is the generality of the answer to your question. Specifically, the thing becomes a little bit more complicated for the following reason. There is no question that there are certain things in the Dead Sea Scrolls that strongly influence Christianity that may not have influenced Judaism. On the other hand, there are other things in the Dead Sea Scrolls that seem like they're in complete continuity with Judaism and don't seem to be in continuity at all with Christianity. So my view of this is that we have to have a much more complex model. We have to start by saying that we only know a small percentage of what was going on in Second Temple Judaism. So therefore, the extent to which Qumran materials may enlighten us about Christianity requires us to still remember that there may have been other groups that don't exist. And furthermore, that it's not as if some group fed into Christianity, or for that matter, into rabbinic Judaism. It's about the fact that there were a variety of groups and a large common tradition and a variety of texts. And these books, groups, etc., influenced the rise of Christianity, some of them in different ways. Just as one example, Pharisaic ethics are the basis for the ethics of Christianity. That's no question if you read passages like the Sermon on the Mount. It's blatantly obvious. At the same time, certain ideas of these sectarians may have influenced rabbinic Judaism. So it's a complex sorting out of ideas and a simple model like, you know, people got on a bus at Qumran and got off at an early Christian church. That kind of simplistic approach doesn't reckon with the complexity of the intellectual and religious tradition, knowledge, etc., that we're gaining of Second Temple Judaism. 